Hey, hey, I'm going to answer a question that was put to me on the mentoring group, and we'll get into the details. So let me just uh, read it off my screen here so I get it exact. Uh, after learning about how some people were able to get some freelancing gigs after your mentoring program, I'm at a crossroads right now in terms of what direction I should move towards, freelance or getting my first developer job. Are they mutually exclusive paths? Question number one. Do you have to choose get a job or be a freelancer? Uh, number two, should I pursue one before the other? What would you recommend? Greatly appreciate your insights. All right. So first of all, they are not mutually exclusive paths, meaning you can actually get your first job and start freelance gigging on the side. In fact, this is something I recommend for people, especially if you're tight for cash, you need to start making money. So that's route number one. You get a job full-time or part-time working for a company, and then on the side, you start building up your freelancing uh, business or maybe your SaaS business. Why would you want to do it this way? Wouldn't having a job slow you down with your ultimate goal of becoming a freelancer or maybe setting up your own software as a service business. In one way, it will slow you down. In another way, it will give you runway and it will give you skills that will allow you to more easily transition into a freelance career or into a software building career. Let me give you a little insight. So your first job, he's talking about getting his first job as a developer. So you're a noob. Going to work for somebody will allow you to learn how companies operate in terms of writing code. So you're gonna get some education there, number one. So number two, uh, when you have money coming in, this gives you a uh, a little less pressure on yourself, right? Because you got money coming in, your bills are being paid. So you can take your time to build your business, whether it be freelance or starting a SaaS. I'm just gonna say business, it could be either or, it doesn't matter. And uh, why do you need some runway? You need some time to build your business because most of the time, for most of us, it's gonna take time before your business ramps up. That's normal for business, that there's some lead time, some lag time before it starts to really go. You can think of a, of, a, of a business as being like a larger truck or like a boat. It doesn't just go full speed right away. It takes time to build up. Once it gets going though, there's momentum. You just get money rolling in. So that's the advantage. So when you work for somebody for the first time, the advantage is you start making money right away. You get your paycheck right away every two weeks and you're making money. Uh, the disadvantage is that there's typically a glass ceiling. There is a ceiling in terms of your earnings. Uh, how much you make is, is somewhat dependent on your skill set, but it's much more dependent on the company you work for. Uh, they will incrementally raise your salary based on all kinds of different circumstances. Whereas if you have your own business, uh, the downside is that it uh, takes time typically. Some people jump right in and have a lot of gigs. Maybe you're moving into, like we have some people on my mentoring program. They already have, they already have a background in another industry. Uh, so they have a lot of contacts in the industry. Uh, they have experience in other industries. So by learning to code and understanding the business end of software development and freelancing, uh, in the mentoring program, what happens there, they can take those years of experience, all those contacts in the previous business, and, and jumpstart their new career in the coding world so they can get up really very, very quickly. Uh, so that's not, that's a, that is a circumstance that can happen. That can happen. But for most people, it takes time to develop what I call your book, your freelance stable of clients, your free or your stable clients for your SaaS business. So you gotta expect that to take time. So you need runway, you need time and money, that means money to be able to do this. So before I would dip into your savings, if you have savings, I would rather work at another job and then work on weekends and evenings to slowly develop my freelance 
uh, my freelance business. That is the best way to go. So is it mutually exclusive, meaning you can only get a job or do freelance and you can't, that's no, they're not. You can find a blend. Another thing you can do, especially uh, you know, once you get some uh, skills, and I'm not just talking about coding skills, I'm talking about coding, project management, good communication skills. Once you get some skills and you are considered a very valuable person in the game, you could negotiate more flexible schedule for yourself. So you could say to your employer, once your freelance business starts to move a little bit, you could say, listen, I'm really busy and uh, I want to work four days a week or I want flex time. I want to be able to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, an extra two, three hours and be able to work a half day on Thursday or Friday, something like that. You will have more and more leverage as you develop more and more skills and reputation working for somebody. So you could slowly transition from working for a company to your own business. So that is the route that I actually recommend most of the time. Although I've had people go from zero, learn that the coding within like 45, 50 days, they get their first jobs as a freelancer doing simple jobs, doing simple gigs. So uh, there you go. I hope that answers uh, that question. And uh, that's it for now. Bye-bye. Before I close off this video, let me just point out something I said I said to somebody here. I said, uh, the good thing about decisions is that you can decide again the next day, a week later, a month later, two years later. So just because you choose one route, it's not like you can change course. Not even close. Uh, you could, so for example, decide to start working for somebody. Within a week or two, you say, you know what? I can't work on my freelance stuff or this job is no good for me. So you do something else. It's not a big deal. Even learning programming languages like this, by the way, everybody, if let's say you start off with uh, Python and then you say, you know what? Two weeks later, this Python is just too much fun, and it's too easy, and there's too many jobs, and you decide that you want to you want to um, challenge yourself. So you decide you're going to go into Ruby because you know that there's going to be no jobs, but you figure you want to go there because without all, all those jobs, you, you have to really compete much harder to get a job in that world. So you may decide a week later to go to Ruby, and then you watch one of my videos and you realize that's no good. And then you decide you're gonna go into JavaScript. And next thing you know, uh, you're having a hot dog. Okay, I'm just kidding around. No, the beautiful thing about decision making is that uh, you can change your mind again. So you can go this route and say, oh, you know, not too good. Change a little bit, go to another route. Same thing with learning languages. Great thing about learning languages, by the way, let's say you start with uh, Python, and after a month, eh, I'm going to do JavaScript. For you to move from Python to JavaScript, as somebody just wrote, wrote me actually a few days ago, they're doing my web stack course, and they did, they did the JavaScript. That's the, the first the JavaScript course is, is uh, the third course in, in the series. And then they went into the PHP and they were like, wow, learning PHP is so easy now since I know JavaScript. Why? Because JavaScript and PHP and Python and C Sharp and Java and Ruby and Perl and so many other languages, Swift share many of the same qualities, many of the same basic constructs and principles. So it's not like a huge issue. It's like I know young People are like, oh my God, oh, I, I hope I chose the, I choose the right language. Oh, disaster, I choose Ruby. No, don't do it. It doesn't matter because you can always just pivot from one to the other. Even with Ruby.